All right, guys. So today we're going to talk about something a little bit different. Today we're actually going to be checking out a phone. Now, don't worry, I'm not becoming a tech YouTuber that covers phones. There's plenty of those guys out there. But this one phone in particular is more focused around media. In fact, it has like all of these different flagship specs, but it didn't really come with the flagship price. So I thought that it was definitely worth talking about because a lot of my channel is based around things that are used towards media. But it's also based around focusing on devices that don't cost as much as some of the more expensive ones. So the phone we're going to check out today is the brand new Poco X4 GT. Now the original Poco phone was like this very popular phone uh, because of all of the specs and the camera and everything and it really competed with a lot of flagship devices but came in at a really low price. In fact, this Poco X4 GT only comes in at 430 bucks, which I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in checking them out. But I really want to talk about a lot of these specs that this phone has, because I, I honestly, uh, I've tried the new Pixel 6 Pro, the new Galaxy S22, got the iPhone 13, and I found myself being pleasantly surprised with this Poco phone, where I actually prefer it in a lot of situations. So we're gonna talk about a lot of that. Uh, we're gonna talk about what comes inside the box and the specs uh, and everything that this phone has to offer and see why I think it is a hell of a deal coming in at 430 bucks. So to start with, if you are interested in checking it out, it is available in three different colors. Now the two variations that you can buy is either the one that has 128 gigs of storage or 256. Both come with eight gigabytes of RAM and also the UI that's on here here, the user interface is an MIUI 13, and I'm also surprised at how clean and how smooth this system works. As far as the media side, it has Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos, so the screen quality and the imaging and stuff on this phone are just incredible, but the audio is very impressive. It does have some of the higher end Bluetooth codec support. Also having Dolby Atmos gives you this option where you can go in and change different EQ settings. It has some pre-built stuff in there. Uh, but it also has one that's called Mi Audio uh, because this phone also has a headphone jack where when you have a pair of wired headphones or IEMs or earbuds or anything like that plugged in, this is a whole separate audio control which also has EQ settings, but it also has an adaptive sound where it will just kind of change depending on the genre that you're listening to so that you're always getting the best out of your audio quality. And then you also have auto volume control within these options. So again, from a media standpoint, it is very impressive. Now some other things is this phone does have a Wi-Fi 6 chip. It is running Bluetooth 5.3, and it also has a liquid cooling vapor chamber. So if you're somebody that likes to game on your device, and you do know if you're running more intensive games, it does get hot after a while. This liquid cooling chamber helps keep your phone cool, and it makes it where you can game for longer periods of time. So that just means you don't really have to worry about your phone overheating. Now the chip that they decided to use on this is a Dimensity 8100 chip. Now I didn't know anything about it so I did have to kind of research this a little bit. And it actually outperforms the Snapdragon 888 on several different things including the CPU, the GPU, and the memory performance. And Snapdragon 888s are in a lot of the higher tier Android phones that are out there. So the fact that this chip is able to outperform those, especially in these categories, again, I was very impressed with. Now the screen that's on this phone, which I think is gorgeous, is a 6.6 inch 2460 by 1080. It is a 20.5 by nine aspect ratio, so it is longer and skinnier. And if you're watching a lot of content, which is obviously in widescreen mode, this just means that you're getting a lot more of your picture and you're not really having to worry about having the black bars at the top and the bottom. Now the screen itself has a 144 hertz refresh fresh rate. Now I shoot at 24 frames per second for my videos, so you're not going to be able to really tell how smooth this screen actually scrolls. And as far as the pixels per inch, it is 407. And again, I was just very impressed at the screen quality. In fact, even outdoors, I had no issues being able to see my screen very clearly. Now the build quality, it is a plastic build. I don't know if this is just to kind of keep the pricing down a little bit, uh, but they do include a soft clear silicone case. Now I do like the case to a certain extent, 
although it does come with a little flap that covers the charging port, which I'm not a huge fan of that, but that kind of keeps things from getting in your charging port. The phone, like I said earlier, does have a headphone jack. It also has dual speakers on the left and right side when you're holding it in landscape mode. And another thing that I am a huge fan of, because I'm not the biggest fan of the face scanning to unlock, this does use a fingerprint unlock, although it also has a face unlock as well. And the fingerprint scanner on here is super fast. Uh, it's unlocked before you know it and you can actually have the face unlock and the fingerprint unlock on at the same time so basically your phone is just going to always be unlocked uh, because it'll just do it really without you thinking about it now another thing about this phone which i think is very impressive especially if you're going to be consuming media and you might be concerned about your battery life is it is also using what they call a seven stage dynamic switch display so you can have it where it will just automatically adapt to if you're gaming or watching a movie and this will change the refresh rate and so that way you can get more out of your battery life and not just drain it because your phone is going to be running at a high refresh rate all the time so i personally still just choose to leave my phone at the 144 hertz refresh rate all the time because I like everything to just look smooth and I'm not somebody that's just heavily using my phone all the time so I'm not really concerned about the battery life but the battery life on this phone I think is very impressive it does use a 5080 milliamp battery and now it says you can get about two days on a full charge uh, that's really going to be without using your phone much at all and using it with the brightness like pulled back quite a bit but this is definitely one of those phones you can get through a full day even if you're somebody that is a heavy user uh, and you don't really have to worry about charging it too much but another huge plus about this phone is if your phone is about to die you can fully charge this phone in only 46 minutes and it does have that fast charging and in fact unlike a lot of these flagship phones that are coming out you actually get a 67 watt charger in the box now the charger does have like the uk plug-in so you are going to have to buy an adapter if you're in the us to actually get it to plug into a normal plug i was able to find these on amazon for like three bucks so that's really not that big of a deal but it's definitely something i want you to know now another thing that i know is very important to a lot of people out there especially when they're looking at new phones are the cameras and the cameras on this phone did not disappoint at all now this phone is using a triple camera system it has a 64 megapixel main shooter but it does have an 8 megapixel ultra wide lens and a 2 megapixel macro lens and you actually have some different settings that you can switch between within the camera app that this phone uses now you obviously just have your photo and video mode but there is also a pro mode so that you can take like more manual controls over things it also has a 64 megapixel mode that way you're getting the highest resolution that you can get out of your shot now this is going to take up more space if you just take all of your photos in the 64 megapixel so i only recommend switching this over into that if it's something that you're thinking of about printing now obviously it does have the time lapse mode and slow motion in fact the slow motion on this records at 120 frames per second at 1080 so you can actually switch it down to 720p and get 240 frames per second but I think the 1080p at 120 seems to be the sweet spot and another thing is the selfie camera on this phone is a 16 megapixel camera now I noticed with the selfie cam it seems to have a very contrast look where uh, the blacks seem pretty dark and it's trying to brighten up the whites uh, quite a bit so uh, it doesn't seem as natural as the main camera on the back which with any phone the main camera on the back is the best camera on the phone in general so if possible I always recommend trying to use that lens instead of the selfie one. and as far as video it does shoot at 4k 30 frames per second but if you download the filmic pro app which is what the one that i use you can switch it over into 24 frames and you can shoot up to 4k and the video quality i found to be extremely good and i really do think it competes with the cameras that are on those other flagship models out there so uh, camera quality is no issue with this phone and really my overall opinion is this is a flagship phone while giving up Qi wireless charging and having a very kind of plastic lightweight body. It, it just doesn't feel as premium as a lot of the other phones that I mentioned earlier, like the iPhone 13, uh, the S22, and then the Pixel 6 Pro. Those phones just have some really 
good solid build and weight to them. Again, this is kind of nitpicking because this phone comes in at half the cost of all of those other phones that I mentioned. And so overall, I was just very impressed. And Poco, again, is one of those companies that hasn't really disappointed me much. I mean, even with the true wireless earbuds that I've tested, uh, those were very good. I've had several different phones from them and they always seem to just compete with the more expensive phones that I'm used to using. So this is just one of those brands that I like to talk about because I like to recommend them because you guys seem to be interested in more budget-friendly options. And this company has proved that their budget-friendly options don't really make you feel like you're giving up too much. But guys, that wraps up my video on the brand new Poco X4 GT. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Thank you so much for checking out all the other videos. And as always, make sure to stay tuned for more.